I'm Elena Martin, the director of Creatura. Creatura tells the story about a woman that um, she moves to a house in the countryside with her boyfriend and there she realizes that she has some blockages with sexuality and embarks on a journey down memory lane in order to understand uh, where these blockages come from. Uh, the initial seed started already more than five years ago and uh, it was a moment where I was on a performance project with uh, like we were 10 or 15 women and we were investigating uh, around our body and uh, also talking and sharing experiences of uh, uh, sexual experiences or experiences with desire and uh, I started to realize that um, there were a lot of common things between us and that uh, no one had really like a, a chill relationship to her body. And then I started to investigate, I started to read about uh, also sexual awakening in childhood. And I've, I found that so interesting because it's so intertwined with um, the awakening of wanting to know, like of this moment where children ask why and why and why. So it's really a vital energy that gets uh, somehow restricted in a very young age and that brings consequences. And then Clara Roquette, the co-screenwriter, jumped in the project. We started to do interviews. And in the interviews, uh, we, I mean, we realized definitely that, the, that there was a thing about this and we started to uh, build this character, Mila, that is actually three different characters because we are very different people in different moments of our lives that are kind of a Frankenstein of all those experiences that we've read and asked and also lived somehow. Interviews, it was very informal. We started thinking about asking people because we were trying to write things and uh, trying to decide what are the specific consequences that she has in adulthood. We started from there actually, the interviews. So we started asking more like women our age, but then we said, okay, yeah, but this happens to you now, but what about, do you remember your first experience uh, in adolescence? Or do you remember if you would masturbate uh, with a pillow when you were uh, a kid? or? Do you remember any of these uh, situations? And we started to interview friends of friends, but then also like, ah, my mother has an experience about this, okay. And then, ah, I know a girl, or I've been working with a guy, I know a sexologist, and that's the way we did it. For me, the most important one was, uh, I, I don't know the name in English, in Spanish is uh, Infancia la Edad Sagrada, a childhood, the sacred age, I think that something like that would be. And it's uh, from Evania Reichert. I had to uh, search for a lot of concepts while I was reading it and it, it was about the development of the character. And inside of this development of the character, sexuality was playing a, a big role. And um, yeah, that was an important reading. Then I read other things also. We, saw, we, we searched for a lot of movies that could be referenced. It was difficult to find. It was difficult to find. There are a lot of sexual awakenings in adolescence, but many times that are very focused in danger, as if it were something intrinsical in desire. And that was uh, complicated, although interesting, to watch. And we found a s very beautiful short film called The Most Beautiful Man in the World, or The Most Beautiful Man in the Earth, five minutes long. It's the only reference that we found about uh, childhood sexuality. <laughs> I, uh, it's an interesting question. I don't know where Barcelona or Catalonia is at in this discussions because I feel like I, I live a bit in a bubble. I come from experimental theater. So uh, I've, uh, since adolescence, I've had uh, these spaces where uh, through creation, many things are talked. 
and uh, all these women. One of them is actually the actress that uh, plays the mother in childhood, Carla Linares. We did our first film as actresses uh, together when we were young and then we we started a group with other uh, women that we were working with in theater. And it came from the feeling that we were doing, we had a, a theater group somehow, and uh, it was mixed. And we had the feeling that some of us weren't feeling very comfortable to really explore intimacy in this ambience. So we tried like to just be women and, um, and it worked. I mean, it was, uh, it was very interesting. Like we could push things really far. We ate a lollipop with the form of our vagina. That was crazy. And <laughs> that was one of the things that we did. And uh, when people told me then afterwards that in the interviews, like, oh, I haven't speak, uh, spoken about this before. It was sad because I felt like I'm so lucky that I had this environment where I could speak about these things, at least during my 20s, not before. Adolescence was a bit more hard, but yeah, after, yes. It was very important for us uh, to decide what was the context of the family, because um, we had the feeling that uh, there are more reference of uh, sexual repression within a Catholic family, for instance. And um, Spanish is a Catholic country, and uh, culturally speaking, and also the, the, the left uh, winged people are, have a lot of influence of uh, Catholicism. And uh, we wanted to portray like a middle, middle up uh, class family that is like progressist, they vote the right wing, uh, left wing parties, um, they speak about uh, socialism, but uh, they're not feminist. <laughs> and I think this contradiction also within, in the generation of our parents is very common. And um, I think our mothers uh, suffered a lot from this contradiction without knowing it, right? Because uh, my mother, for instance, is a working woman, like she's a, she um, she's very ambitious in her work and she took care of uh, the household her whole life. So, and I don't think these women realized at the moment that they were in this in between, like trying to be open minded, but also like embodying this role, this very strict role. And we are still in this process, but at least we can put words on it. Yes, the three different uh, temporalities of the movie weren't that obvious at the beginning because we, when we started writing, it was a very free process. Like we wrote different kind of scenes that weren't related one to the other. And we had scenes from a character when she was 12 years old, then when she was 18, then when she was 22, then maybe when she was 40 and struggling to, uh, but then we, we went a little bit back to the books, like uh, first sexual awakening is between three and six year old, more or less. And there's normally, because repression comes in, culturalization comes in, and then uh, kids start this uh, time where they say, oh, they are kissing, oh, gross, right? Or no, I don't know, I don't want. Uh, and then, there it comes the, the adult sexual awakening with fertility in adolescence. And so these two moments were like, okay, let's try to put everything in these two moments. Also like the the scenes that we have with we had with eighteen, maybe they can fit in fifteen or we can, we have to change them a little bit, but they can work. And then the thirties was was also a key moment because uh, it's kind of unconsciously at least in our, in our culture, it's unconsciously the moment where our generation starts to uh, think about their own family. As a woman, you start to think, should I get pregnant? Or the counting backwards starts somehow. So you start to try to understand your parents more. Somehow I have the feeling that you, you I think, 
or at least this is what I saw in my environment, like 30 years old is a proper adult before it's still like, like a lo long adolescence. There is an isolation of adult Mila. It was not something that we searched. It was something that we uh, tried not to <laughs> happen because um, Clara and I are people that uh, really have like a, a huge uh, net of friendships and we really rely on friends. And uh, from our point of view, it was obvious that she we need to have therapy sessions, first of all, in the movie, and then like also like informal therapy fresh, uh, sessions with friends. But we had to choose because we really wanted her to go back to the, f to the family house and to be in front of the sea and to go back to this uh, place in summer. We wanted the whole movie that already happens in three different timelines, that it happens in the same place. At the beginning, it started in Barcelona. There was a plot there. They, she had friends there. And at the end, we had to leave it more in a like off uh, shot somehow. Um, but there's no calls or anything. So I get that the impression is this one. But at the end of the day, it was better to go this way and have the build a stronger relationship with the feminine lineage through the house, through the memories. Then. Uh, the relationship with friends and I really want to explore it in, in next films because um, it's something that is so meaningful for me, friendships. So. It was very important to make this translation from something more academic to fiction because we wanted to do fiction, we wanted to tell a story that was um, accessible, that was emotional, because uh, at the end of the day it's a movie that has been done in order to open dialogue. That was clear from the beginning. We didn't want to make a film that is elitist, that is just understandable if you know a lot of, about the topic. It was meant to be really like for everyone. I know it's not like a classic structure. I know it's not like a full commercial <laughs> movie, um, but um, for me, it was very important that the people that dare to watch a movie like this could feel the journey of Mila and understand and, and also like reflect on their own experiences. And the way to do that was uh, slow. It was like um, we really focused on finding scenes that would carry a conflict within the scene and that, that could portray what we were trying to explain. The relationship between the characters was the key for me. It was very important to find the different characters and what wounds every character has. We have like a such a long de character description for every character in the movie. <laughs> and that was very important. And then make them play somehow. And once we started to play with them, fiction arrived like, oh, but she's mad at him. And with Clara, that was very funny. That was that was the fun part of the script. And also, it was it was very important to find the mood in the house, like these small steps to genre that we do like very very shyly. And it was very important um, to decide to put the rush in the movie, because that was a, a thread that helped us to raise questions about what was happening and create a bit of dramatic tension until the end. We saw from the beginning, if we want Mila to have complex uh, problems and complex situations, the other characters ha have to be complex too. Because um, if she has a a father that is like very obviously restrictive and um, it's easier probably when she's 30 years old that she already confronted him before, right? Like uh, if you don't have a good relationship with your father and you don't agree with uh, the way he thinks and um, you are angry at him somehow, then probably before you're 30, you've already said something or just like 
cut the relationship. And um, it was interesting for us that um, we could understand him. Uh, as I said, the movie has also this intention of opening a dialogue. I know this is not a welcomed word in arts in general, but being a little bit, I don't know if that's existing in English, but didactive, like to teach a little bit also. And um, in order to do that, they couldn't be bad guys in the movie. Like we, I think the, the system is actually what um, conforms all, all these different ways to uh, relate one to each other. But the individuals, they can, I mean, you can understand someone even though he thinks differently. And um, by understanding this person, probably if it's a person that is close to you, you understand yourself better. And that was what we were trying to do with the movie, to understand also the men that um, were uh, influencing Mila's life and Mila's sexuality. The structure of the movie was decided in, in script because until we didn't found the, the structure, the film wasn't telling what we wanted to tell. It happened something that we started writing it chronologically, but then if you have a three-part movie and the ending is uh, the resolution, it's a conclusion. And it didn't make any sense that adulthood uh, would work as a conclusion. Adulthood had to be a question. Uh, so it had to be at the beginning, but then what is at the end? So at the end we found this structure where, where adulthood is divided in three and in the middle are, is uh, adolescence and childhood. And the order was very organic because somehow she goes from the present and she remembers the, what is more in the surface and then she goes deeper backwards. Um, and also it's when everything starts. At the same time, for us it was very important that going backwards didn't mean to, ah, now I understand everything, everything is solved. And that meant that during the process of the movie there had to be already answers in between. it, And that's, that was very dangerous because uh, I think culturally uh, we are kind of set uh, in a way that uh, we start a movie about feminine sexuality uh, where a woman has a blockage and we think about rape. It's the first thing that we think. And it's like, when is it gonna happen? That was clear, like also politically, we're not gonna climax with a rape scene. That is not gonna happen. Like, it's not a revelation. This is something that we all know it happens. We're not gonna use it as a climax moment in a movie. So um, that was very important, that we were really tight on regulating the expectations when you watch the movie and giving answers. Meanwhile, al already not waiting until the end because otherwise it was everything with the same color, like when is it gonna happen? It's like, no, no, that's not how it works. Or, that's not how it works in life. Like many things happen in life and Sometimes the ones that are stronger maybe affect less, and the ones that are softer affect more. You don't know. We read an article um, that Brit Marling, I don't know if Brit Marling wrote that, I think she wrote that in the New York Times. And, um, and she was asking herself about the structure of uh, an orgasm, like, uh, masculine orgasm and she said right that uh, it's like tension climax and release and that's normally how it works with a three acts structure and she was asking herself how would it work with a feminine orgasm and um, and she didn't have the answer nor do we <laughs> but um, it was re really challenging to chase for that answer and there are examples of movies that don't have the structure, of course, there are plenty of them. And that was also interesting to study somehow. And also the circular um, 
structures, for instance, right? Or the ones that maybe you have a climax at the beginning of the movie. Like we start with a very uh, heavy scene and like the sex scene where it ends up in a conflict. And we say like, why not? Because some people t told us, wait, keep this scene for, for maybe the second act. And we were like, why? It's here. It's gonna stay here now. Working with a child actor was very challenging too because um, it was very important that um, we created a safe environment uh, to shoot all the scenes that were very complex. When we wrote the script we said okay it's not that bad because it's actually the, the symbolism of the scenes, the, our message of repression comes from the look that the adult actors have over the child more than what she does. She actually, she's also always in a playing mood somehow in the movie. So uh, on script, it wasn't that crazy to shoot that. But at the same time, it's like, okay, but she has to rub against a pillow. How do we do that? We thought a lot about these things. We had a coach for children and we had also intimacy coordinator. And that was key. I learned a lot. Uh, they are amazing people, it's uh, Intimact are, is the name of the company and um, and they said things like uh, ki children, even though it's natural, even though the, the kid in the movie, she said on set many times like, I'm, it's very hot, I want to be naked and we were like, no, but look, we cannot be naked in here. So she was a very free girl and that's why we chose her. But it was very important for us to be responsible of her and to protect her as much as we could. And a very uh, interesting thing that we talked with her mother, her parents are very cool guys and they are actors and that helped a lot. And uh, we talked with her mother, a thing that was like, okay, we need to protect her, but we, d we don't want her to feel shame because then we're doing the same thing, right? And, when, and if she says, I want to show my vulva, and we'll say, no, you cannot. We need to explain her why. Because other, or otherwise, we're doing the same thing that we criticize somehow, no? So it was a very beautiful process for a few <laughs> weeks, like raising a child. <laughs> that was very, that was very interesting. We were about to change the title so many times because we thought, it is very strange, it's very complex, but the title of the movie is really explaining the core of the movie and I like it very much. Uh, it's because um, in Catalan we use criatura to refer to a child, like come on criaturas and it's like come on kids. And, um, and when I, I was already on the writing of the movie, I thought like, wait a moment, criatura? Where does it come from? And I saw it comes from criatura that is a synonym for creation, so it implies a creator. And that was crazy, because um, we were talking about how um, we pass our wounds from one, or our misconceptions from one generation to the other, and uh, we are portraying a woman that has been many, during many years in her life, trying to fit in the image of that her parents have from her. So criatura, criatura, the, which is the, the root in Latin for criatura, was very, was perfect.